Hello and welcome to our roundup of the European Parliament's latest plenary session here in Strasbourg. It's an emotionally charged issue, the anti-counterfeiting trade agreement, otherwise known as ACTA. Now, supporters of ACTA say it could be a vital tool to prevent piracy of a range of different products, from music to medicine. But ACTA has also stirred angry protests from people and organisations who say it threatens individual rights. Parliament this week held a debate and vote on whether to approve ACTA. The International Trade Committee, which has overall responsibility for ACTA, had earlier recommended that the agreement should be rejected by MEPs. The EPP group had called for the vote to be postponed until the European Court of Justice could rule on ACTA's compatibility with EU law. The EPP group's spokesman on this issue is Christopher Fjellner, a Swedish MEP. It is irresponsible to vote on ACTA to take a stand before we have everything on the table, before the European Court of Justice has ruled on the agreement. This is not a serious and responsible approach. And to those who oppose it, I would ask, why? Why are you so afraid that you insist at all costs that the vote must take place before the EU's highest judicial body has had its say? In the end, Parliament rejected ACTA, but that doesn't mean that the issue of protecting intellectual property, which ACTA was supposed to resolve, will go away. Recently, we brought you news of how the EU member states in the Council have moved to exclude MEPs from the supervision of the Schengen system, which ensures the free movement of people within the EU. It's created a major row. MEPs are determined to have their say on what has become one of the EU's biggest success stories. This week, the focus was on complaints that national governments are reimposing border controls in the Schengen zone, in apparent defiance of EU law. MEPs are worried that member states are trying to undermine the Schengen Accord and are using concerns about immigration as a pretext for re-establishing checks at the EU's internal borders. The Parliament says that it should have an equal voice with the Council in supervising the Schengen system. Carlos Coelho, an EPP group member from Portugal, serves as Parliament's rapporteur on Schengen. The Council wants to continue to cover up systematic breaches of the Schengen Agreement through the peer-to-peer -peer assessment system. We need a real community assessment system led by the European Commission and subject to co-decision, in other words, together with the Parliament. That, in our opinion, will defend Schengen and will defend free circulation, which is one of the best successes in the building of Europe. Defendemos a livre circulação, defendemos essa que é uma das maiores guarantias e um dos maiores sucessos da construção europeia. The Cypriot presidency of the council had the difficult job of justifying the member states approach to the parliament. The Cypriot Deputy Minister for European Affairs, Andreas Mavroyanis, took a conciliatory approach despite the skepticism of MEPs. I'm of course well aware of the sensitivity of this decision for the parliament. This decision was taken for legal reasons even if its consequences may be felt by members here to be political. The Council was not in any way motivated by a wish to exclude the Parliament from the process. On the contrary, we want Parliament to be fully involved. With the busy holiday season about to start, the issue of free movement across the EU's internal borders is likely to become an even hotter political topic. Now, Europe's roads are likely to be clogged with holiday traffic over the next few weeks, and sadly that means a likely increase in traffic accidents. But MEPs have this week voted to approve a new compulsory accident warning system to be fitted in all new cars by 2015, which could save hundreds of lives a year. This new system is called eCall. It's a web-based system that aims to ensure automatic notification to emergency services in case of a serious accident. It works by using sensors on airbags and seat belts. E-call will mean emergency services arriving earlier at the scene of an accident, allowing for prompt, life-saving medical intervention. Dieter Lebrecht-Koch, a German MEP from our group, is co-rapporteur for the proposal. 
Solange die im Fahrzeug verbauten Sensoren keinen Unfall detektieren. For as long as the e-call system remains inactive, it does not send any signal or data. So in this respect, in terms of data protection, it is much better than a mobile phone. It is only through the automatic sensors or by manual intervention that the e-call system is activated. Aufwecken oder den bewussten manuellen Auslösen wird das System aktiv. With 40,000 people dying in accidents on Europe's roads every year, e-call could have a significant impact on road safety. Well, for the time being, that's all from the European Parliament here in Strasbourg. We'll be back in September. But until then, you can find out more about all the activities of Europe's largest and most influential political force, the EPP Group, on our website, eppgroup.eu. Thanks for watching and see you again soon.